Shear Zone A shear zone is a planar or curvilinear zone of intense deformation within rocks, where differential stress has caused significant strain and displacement. These zones are commonly found in the Earth's crust and mantle and are formed in response to tectonic forces such as compression, extension, or transgression. Shear zones play a crucial role in the deformation and evolution of the lithosphere and are often associated with fault systems, metamorphic processes, and magmatic activity. Characteristics of Shear Zones Shear zones can vary in size, ranging from microscopic structures to large-scale regional features spanning hundreds of kilometers. They are typically defined by the following characteristics. Strain Localization Shear zones represent areas where deformation is concentrated, while surrounding rocks may remain relatively undeformed. The intensity of strain often decreases as you move away from the shear zone's core. Geometry and Orientation Shear zones can form at various angles depending on the tectonic regime and stress field. They may exhibit a planar, curvilinear, or anastomosing geometry. Rock Fabrics Shear zones are often marked by foliations, lineations, and mineral alignment caused by deformation. Mylonites, a common rock type associated with shear zones, exhibit finely laminated textures and evidence of intense ductal deformation. Deformation Mechanisms Deformation within a shear zone can be ductal, brittle, or a combination of both, depending on factors like temperature, pressure, and rock composition. In high temperature conditions, ductal deformation dominates, producing features such as recrystallized grains and plastic flow. In contrast, brittle deformation dominates in cooler, shallow conditions, resulting in fractures and faults. Formation and types of shear zones Shear zones are classified based on their deformation style and tectonic setting. Ductal shear zones These occur at greater depths in the crust, where rocks deform plastically due to high temperature and pressure. Minerals undergo recrystallization and grain size reduction, forming foliated rocks like myelinites or ultramyelinites. Brittle shear zones Found at shallower crustal levels, where deformation occurs through fracturing, faulting, and cataclysis. Rocks in these zones often exhibit features like fault gouge, breccia, or cataclysites. Ductal brittle shear zones These occur at intermediate depths, where both ductal and brittle deformation mechanisms are active. Such zones often feature a mixture of brittle fractures and ductal fabrics. Strikeslip shear zones These develop in response to horizontal shear stresses, often associated with transform plate boundaries or lateral fault movements. Thrust and normal shear zones Thrust shear zones form in compressional settings, while normal shear zones are associated with extensional tectonic regimes. Geological importance Shear zones are significant for understanding crustal and mantle dynamics, as they provide insights into the deformation history of rocks and the tectonic evolution of an area. Key reasons for their importance include Metamorphic processes High-grade metamorphic minerals such as garnet, kyanite, and storolite often form or recrystallize in shear zones due to elevated pressure and temperature conditions. Economic resources Shear zones are often associated with the concentration of valuable minerals and or deposits, including gold, copper, and rare earth elements. Seismic activity Many active faults are shear zones that act as zones of weakness in the crust, making them critical in understanding earthquake mechanics. Structural features Shear zones can control the development of large-scale geological structures, such as folds, naps, and thrust sheets. Examples of shear zones San Andreas Fault Zone, USA A classic example of a brittle shear zone, where strikeslip motion dominates. Moyne Thrust Zone, Scotland A thrust shear zone associated with the Caledonian orogeny. Alpine Fault, New Zealand A major transgressional shear zone accommodating plate boundary deformation. Zagros Shear Zone, Iran 
associated with collision between the Arabian and Eurasian plates. Conclusion Shear zones are dynamic regions within the Earth's lithosphere that record complex interactions between tectonic forces, thermal conditions, and deformation mechanisms. They not only help geologists interpret the structural and metamorphic history of the crust but also have practical implications for resource exploration, seismic risk assessment, and understanding plate tectonics. Formation of Shear Zone the formation of shear zones is a complex process driven by tectonic forces that cause differential stress in the Earth's crust and mantle. These zones of intense deformation develop when stress exceeds the strength of the surrounding rock, resulting in the localization of strain and displacement. The process involves a combination of mechanical, thermal, and chemical factors, which determine the nature and characteristics of the shear zone. Below is a detailed exploration of how shear zones form, the mechanisms involved, and the conditions that influence their development. 1. Tectonic Setting and Stress Conditions The formation of shear zones begins with tectonic forces, which create differential stress in the lithosphere. This stress can result from various geodynamic processes, such as Convergent boundaries, Compression forces at plate boundaries can create thrust or reverse shear zones, often associated with mountain building, orogenic, processes. Divergent boundaries, extension forces in rift zones or mid-ocean ridges can lead to the formation of normal shear zones. Transform boundaries, lateral or horizontal shear stress at transform faults leads to strike-slip shear zones. Intraplate settings, shear zones can also form within tectonic plates due to localized stress fields, such as those caused by magmatic intrusions or mantle convection. The orientation and intensity of the stress field play a crucial role in determining the geometry and kinematics of the shear zone. 2. Initiation of strain localization. For a shear zone to form, strain must localize into a specific area within the rock. This localization occurs when the surrounding rock cannot accommodate the applied stress uniformly. Factors that promote strain localization include Pre-existing weaknesses, faults, fractures, foliations, or compositional heterogeneities can act as zones of weakness where deformation is concentrated. Thermal gradients, variations in temperature can weaken rocks, promoting ductile deformation in warmer regions and brittle deformation in cooler regions. Pressure variations, changes in pressure, such as those caused by tectonic loading or unloading, can influence strain localization. 3. Deformation Mechanisms The type of deformation within a shear zone depends on the temperature, pressure, strain rate, and rock composition. There are three primary deformation mechanisms. A. Brittle deformation. Occurs at shallow crustal levels, up to 10 to 15 km depth, where temperature and pressure are relatively low. Rocks respond to stress by fracturing, faulting, and cataclysis, mechanical grain crushing. Brittle shear zones often form fault gouge, breccia, or cataclysites. B. Ductile deformation. Dominates at deeper crustal levels, below 15 km, where rocks are subjected to high temperatures, greater than 300 degrees Celsius, and pressures. Rocks deform plastically through processes like crystal plasticity, dynamic recrystallization, and grain boundary sliding. Ductal shear zones are characterized by the formation of myelinites, ultramilanites, and foliated textures. C. Brittle ductal transition occurs in the middle crust, where both brittle and ductile mechanisms operate simultaneously. Features such as fractures filled with recrystallized minerals and partially recrystallized grains are common in these zones. 4. Role of temperature and pressure. Temperature and pressure significantly influence the formation of shear zones by controlling the strength and deformation behavior of rocks. High temperature. Promotes ductile deformation through recrystallization and plastic flow. Enables minerals like quartz and feldspar to deform plastically. High pressure. Increases rock strength but also promotes ductile behavior by inhibiting fracturing. Facilitates phase changes in minerals, 
which can weaken rocks and localize strain. The temperature pressure conditions often define the type of shear zone, e.g., brittle, ductile, or brittle ductile. 5. Grain Scale Processes At the microscopic scale, several processes contribute to shear zone formation. Recrystallization, minerals undergo dynamic recrystallization to form smaller grains, which reduces rock strength and enhances ductile flow. Grain boundary sliding, grains deform by sliding past each other, accommodating strain in ductile zones. Cataclysis, in brittle zones, grains are broken and fragmented, forming fault gouge and breccia. Pressure solution, Dissolution of minerals at grain boundaries under pressure and their precipitation in low-stress areas facilitate strain. These processes create distinctive microstructures, such as foliations, lineations, and shear bands, which are diagnostic of shear zones. 6. Influence of fluids. Fluids play a critical role in shear zone development by reducing rock strength and facilitating deformation. Fluid pressure. High fluid pressure can reduce effective stress, promoting brittle failure. Chemical alteration, fluids can react with minerals, altering their composition and weakening the rock. Hydrothermal activity, in ductile zones, fluids can enhance recrystallization metamorphic reactions, creating minerals like quartz, feldspar, or mica aligned parallel to the shear direction. 7. Feedback mechanisms. Once a shear zone forms, it often evolves due to feedback mechanisms that enhance strain localization. Thermal softening, heat generated by deformation reduces rock viscosity, promoting further deformation. Strain weakening, progressive deformation leads to grain size reduction, recrystallization, and alignment of minerals, which weaken the rock. Fluid infiltration, increased permeability allows more fluids to enter, enhancing weakening processes. These mechanisms create a self-reinforcing cycle, causing shear zones to grow and accommodate large displacements. 8. Types of shear zones based on tectonic setting. Shear zones are classified based on their tectonic origin. Thrust shear zones. Formed in compressional regimes, often associated with mountain building and subduction zones. Examples. Himalayan Main Central Thrust, Moyne Thrust in Scotland. Normal Shear Zones. Developed in extensional settings, such as rift zones or collapsing mountain belts. Examples, Basin and Range Province in the USA. Strike Slip Shear Zones. Occur in transform boundaries or lateral tectonic motions. Examples, San Andreas Fault, California, Alpine Fault, New Zealand. Oblique shear zones. Result from a combination of compressional and strike slip forces, creating complex deformation patterns. 9. Long term evolution of shear zones. Shear zones can evolve over millions of years, transitioning between brittle and ductile behavior as tectonic conditions change. Over time, they can control the development of larger geological structures, such as folds, naps, and fault systems. Additionally, shear zones often act as conduits for magmatic intrusions and hydrothermal fluids, influencing crustal and mantle processes. Conclusion The formation of shear zones is a dynamic and multifaceted process that reflects the interaction of stress, temperature, pressure, and rock composition in the Earth's crust and mantle. These zones are not only critical for understanding tectonic processes but also hold practical importance in resource exploration, seismic hazard assessment, and geotechnical studies. By studying shear zones, geologists gain valuable insights into the deformation history and evolution of the Earth's lithosphere.